Hi, I'm um, Radha Krishnan Mahadevan. I'm a professor at the University of Toronto. I'm also uh, a member of uh, BioZone, which is a center for applied bioscience and bioengineering. Why don't you describe your area of research in layman's terms uh, and its potential impacts on Canada's biomanufacturing and bioengineering ecosystem? I actually do research in the area of metabolism. Metabolism is the process by which uh, the food we eat and glucose in our case is actually burnt to make energy to grow and maintain themselves. Okay, So what we do in our group is to make uh, computer representations of these metabolic processes or basically cells and use these computer representations to actually design cellular processes for different applications. So one of the applications which uh, we are working on in our lab as we speak now is the area of bio nylon. So in bio nylon, what we try to do is to engineer cells to make the components that uh, are useful to make nylon. And so nylon is essentially part of the clothes we wear. It's something that's, uh, you know, if you have a chair or something that you're sitting on, it's, it's a part of the fabric uh, that's used to make uh, these chairs. And so th the idea for us is to take these pathways, put them into uh, uh, baker's yeast so that, you know, in theory, you can not only bake with, uh, with the yeast, but you can also make the clothes that we wear with these yeasts, you know. Fascinating, fascinating. You put it very simply, and of course, it's much more complicated to, to, to make happen, right? Absolutely. There's a lot of processes that go behind actually being able to uh, make yeast spit out nylon. First, you have to actually understand what the pathways are, and then you have to make sure that you can optimize them in some way. And so those optimization is something that we use, uh, we, we do using uh, model-based uh, methods that are basically computer representations of these processes. Often what happens is that, you know, some part of biology sometimes is not very clear, right? So basically there are multiple mechanisms by which biology can, uh, the processes in biology can happen. And one of the advantages of having a computer representation for that is to understand things that are not really well understood. So basically, if there are multiple hypotheses uh, that are underlying a biological event, we can use a model-based framework to actually test them out and then try to figure out that one hypothesis is actually true. And that can actually provide more fundamental knowledge and of course improve our understanding of biology, which can eventually lead to improved computer representations and of course improved designs and applications. And I guess that's an area where things like artificial intelligence or machine learning, where Canada is quite strong, help, right? Absolutely. So you, the, the, the area where we expect uh, machine learning and in, in in general the digital infrastructure to make a, a, a big impact is in the design modeling optimization and design of cellular processes so basically people are able to design using these AI and machine learning tools better strains better proteins better enzymes better catalysts that can actually catalyze the the processes that are required to make these products and and and, and in general the combination of AI machine learning along with with the advances in biology side, with respect to uh, being us being able to rapidly make uh, new genetic designs, S sort of like the speed at which the latest vaccine for COVID uh, were developed, I suppose. Absolutely. So you can see that you know from from the start when the, when the sequence was posted within like you know day or two, the the sequence of the vaccine, the mRNA design was made, and you can actually quickly make it. And, and then the rest of the process is in the regulatory thing, right? Making sure that you go through the phase one, phase two trials, and getting it through the the clinical trials and getting regulatory approval. So that's the the delay as opposed to the design side you know of course there is this this the the aspect of scale up and manufacturing which is also important given that there is uh, a shortage of some of the ingredients that go into these vaccines so how would you describe canada's current bioengineering ecosystem what would you say are some of our strengths and what are areas of improvement in that area yeah yeah so that's a great question i think you know, there is there is canada is actually in my opinion very well positioned to in the, in, in the bioengineering ecosystems right there are i feel like very strong hubs in certain locations so for example in montreal toronto vancouver there is a cluster of companies there's a cluster of research groups that are actually doing work in this area and and separately from that canada also has historic strengths in automation and machine learning in robotics etc so that's lead, led to high throughput data and and basically 
methods to interpret and learn these uh, uh, learn from these high throughput data sets and so so canada has really strong uh, points in, in 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 all of these components in the genomics area in the machine learning area as well as in the high throughput data slash robotics slash omics area you know in canada there's also some weaknesses right i think the in weakness is primarily i would say on the infrastructure side right i mean there is there are a certain groups that like, like the nrc where there is centralized places where they could actually do scale up manufacturing etc but i think like such hubs are not uh, uh, more broad spread in, in the Canadian context. So ideally, you know, you'd like to have hubs in, in, in different locations in the country that actually bring together the bio, biology and the engineering and the equipment and, and the space together, right? And so there is fewer examples of that here, whereas, you know, in the US and other places, you know, there is a lot more investment. For example, in the US, they have recognized that this is a need and, and I know that hundreds of millions of dollars have been uh, spent in terms of setting up a national biomanufacturing ecosystem, right? And so I feel like this is something that Canada needs a coordinated and uh, an integrated approach for doing infrastructure, for doing training and translation for bioengineering R&D. So with that in mind, and the fact that, as you pointed out earlier, we have strengths in many areas, for instance, artificial intelligence. Uh, can you speak to the benefits of multidisciplinary research, particularly as it applies to biology and genomics? Absolutely. So that's a really, really important topic. So what's happened in the last few years is that biology has become uh, seriously information rich, right? So you'll be able to like, you know, do an analysis at what we call the genome scale. And so genomes is basically at the level of genes and usually many organisms have thousands of genes. So every gene, every, every organism, you have thousands of data points. And so such data, especially if it's generated in a high throughput manner, right, lends itself to uh, like machine learning and database methods. And so there is a combination of biology, robotics, uh, and uh, machine learning slash AI that is required to advance bioengineering in the future. So it's definitely uh, really multidisciplinary. And I should point out uh, that, you know, uh, and the center that I am a part of, uh, which is BioZone, is actually a multidisciplinary center where uh, you know, uh, faculty members from different uh, uh, areas come together and tackle some really important problems in sustainability. You know? Now, we're obviously in the middle of a global pandemic and there have been previous ones and we pretty much know for sure that there will be more and some even say perhaps even more often. Uh, why is genomics uh, important in fighting pandemics uh, and, and fighting viruses? And how does your research intersect with that field of genomics? Why is the genome sequence important? Because it's really important for designing vaccines and for designing diagnostics too, to understand how this is different from existing viruses and what are the weak links associated with this virus. So in that case, right, you really need to actually have the genomic information so that you can understand whether a particular virus is spreading and whether a variant of the virus is spreading. And if there are mutations in the virus, are these other ways in which these mutations can allow the virus to escape the antibody treatment or the vaccine treatment? During our interview with Dr. Lakshmi Krishna this morning, she mentioned that it was very important today to invest massively in the bioeconomy for future progress. Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I would say that this is the time to actually invest in biomanufacturing and bioengineering research, primarily for two reasons. One is that there has been a lot of developments that has given us unprecedented access to what's going on inside the cell in terms of genomics, in terms of us being able to characterize the concentration of genes, proteins, metabolites inside the cell. Separately, there has been advances in the area of uh, CRISPR-based tools that has allowed us to engineer with pinpoint accuracy specific aspects of the genome. So these two events have put in, uh, 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 an, uh, create an opportunity for us to engineer these uh, microbial or communities or human cells at, at, at an unprecedented, if you will, a, a level of ability and, and in a very targeted fashion. And that will allow us to apply bioengineering 
for many, many problems that we are not even thinking of. And some of them are people are talking about information storage. So instead of storing in books and whatnot in a library, people are talking about storing such information in a, in a genome and locking it away. So there is a whole slew of applications that we have not even thought about that will become possible with the advances in bioengineering and, 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 and basically uh, CRISPR-based tools. And we hope that Canada is able to uh, take advantage by investing in this particular area at this particular time. You know? If you had 30 seconds to pitch someone or even a group in a position of power to make Canada a leader in bioengineering, who would you choose to pitch and what would you urge him, her or them to do in 30 seconds? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to have 30 seconds with the Prime Minister or the Minister of Science and Innovation, if you will. And, and I would say to them, look, we are at crossroads here. You know, the, Given the pandemic, we have a great opportunity to drive this uh, global transition to su sustainable uh, societies. Right? So that's a push that's coming. And, and, and Canada, if you will, has the strengths in genomics. It has the strengths in artificial intelligence and machine learning, etc. And, 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 and it's time to kind of bring everything together and put together public-private partnerships that can get a coordinated approach to training, research and uh, infrastructure in this area.